This will be this will be tutorial three of our time leaf with Spring Boot application, and today we are going to do uh, adding additional dependencies. Somebody was asking what is dependencies or what are dependencies. Dependencies are simply additional objects that you may need in your application that has been already written by some other programmers. So, for instance, you need an object to connect to your database. This object has been written. You need an object to do mapping between your classes in the in your code and and the entities in your database and things like that. So there are a whole lot of things you actually need to do that you already have objects existing to be written. So dependencies are like adding this object in your in your in your application in the class part and they come in form of jars. I'm going to show you the dependency base or like the location of dependencies added to your project. So now, if you look at your application, uh, the project, the, the, the project explorer, you can see dependencies, Marvin dependencies here. So Marvin is a tool that manages your dependencies. Marvin is responsible for going to wherever these dependencies are online, download them, put them in the particular uh, position uh, folder or the class part of your project. So that's what dependencies are. Now we are going to be adding dependencies, four additional dependencies. Now these four dependencies, they are not available uh, in the in the Spring Initializer. So we are going to add them manually. To add them manually, you need to use uh, two things. Here you have pom.xml, that's the name of the file that you need to add dependency definition. This pom.xml is an XML file that contains markup for the dependencies. And the, the Spring application is going to read this markup. If it finds this markup, it's going to pull this dependency defined in this markup in pom.xml and add it into the list of dependencies for your application. So let's go to add these four dependencies. Dependencies are gotten in a place called Maven repository. So if you actually forget to add some dependencies, that we added in step two, or uh, yeah, in step two or in tutorial two, you can go to Marvin repository. Marvin repository can be accessed from mpn repository, mpn repository.com, and this is where you can get the dependencies. So at this point, I'm going to just I increase this a bit. So the first dependency we want to add is the Spring Web, as you can see. So Spring Web, just like Spring web so this is it spring web i simply i would like to use the second one you can actually use any one you want so i'm going to copy it and i'm going to add it in the dependencies section so here is the dependencies section here so i'm going to add it right here and clean up a bit and the next one we are going to add let's see is a spring context so don't forget to add these dependencies so spring context so yeah so i'm going to click on it and i'm going to take the second one so i'm going to copy and i'm going to put it right there okay now the next one we are going to add So the next one we are going to add, you can see in the page, is Bootstrap. So Bootstrap, you already know what it is. You use it to design user interface. So let's add it. Bootstrap. So you have two of them. You have org.webjazz at BOA, and you have the first one, org.webjazz. Use the first one. If you use the second one, it's not going to work. If you use the first, the second one, yeah, that BOA is not going to work. So I'm going to take 4.3.1 is OK. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it right there. All right, so finally we have one last dependency we are going to add and that is jQuery. So let's look for it, jQuery. All right, so we have org.webjazz at BOA. So don't add this one, always look at look for org.webjazz. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to take 3.4.1 and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it there. Yeah, so, so we've added all the additional dependencies. Now I want you to observe something. 
let's now save this file so i'm going to click on save and notice that right here you can see you can see building workspace so it's actually going online downloading these dependencies and adding it to your application you can see it building workspace so if your internet connection is fast it's going to complete it in a very short time all right so let's see the next step to follow the next step says remove the version tags from the spring web and spring context so now i have version tags here from spring web spring context remove this version tag and then also remove it from the spring web the reason is because there is a, a dependence uh, version specified in the parent application so you can see okay yeah you can see here you can see version spe specified right here and this version covers for all these other dependencies so you don't have to add additional version there so i'm going to save everything and i'm going to just minimize this so save the project we've done that so let me just use this opportunity to show you the architecture we are going to be working with so the architecture is this way let me let me see so we have these four items here oh, what is happening okay, so yeah we have four items we have the html page we have the controller controller is a java file business service is a java file a repository is also a java file now the controller is the code the java code or file or class that contains the endpoints the endpoints are url mappings so that when a user goes and type a url it hits that endpoint and tells the system what to do when a particular url pattern is received this business service is also called data assets uh, object or data asset layer it's kind of uh, best practice that helps you to separate the data layer or the repository from the controller it makes it easy for you to test uh, to test your project without breaking other parts of the project and it's very good is the best it's very good to use a business a business service or the service layer the repository is a class that sits between your database and your application so we are going to be talking more about this as when we are going to be actually creating them one after the other so as I mentioned we have this these three items, repository, service, and controller, they are Java classes. The HTML is, uh, is a view. And the model is something that transfers data from the repository to the, the view, or from the controller to the view. So if you have some, uh, some data, like username or some other things, you want to move it from repository to the HTML page, and PineLoop is going to extract it if, right if it's, in the, if it's in the model. So if it's in this guy, it drives, it drives from the controller to the view. Time loop is going to check inside this car and extract whatever is there and display it on the page. So understand it that way. And in the next step, lesson four, we are going to now add. A, so I don't really know why this. Hmm. Okay, so I have it now. All right, so in step four, we are now going to create a HTML uh, uh, file and test the timely installation.